Hello, I'm Shannon X. Kane. Be sure to watch Community Access Television, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Channel 18, for a series of broadcasts from the Unarius Academy of Science. Learn more about UFOs, extraterrestrial contact, past lives, metaphysics, and much, much more. You can catch the shows on Thursdays at 6 p.m., Saturdays at noon, and Wednesdays at 2.30 p.m. Once again, that's Thursdays at 6 p.m., Saturdays at noon, and Wednesdays at 2.30 p.m. We hope you'll join us here on Channel 18 for these exciting broadcasts from the Inarius Academy of Science in El Cajon, California. Thanks. When you watch television, you don't want the hassle of having to make a choice. At Dix Community Cable, we make the choice for you by offering you nearly 100 channels of Absolutely Dick. Dix Community Cable gets behind you and your community to give you the full service that you deserve. Dix Community Cable also offers high-speed internet connection with the familiar speed of old-fashioned dial-up, just like Grandma used. Dix Community Cable. We're not just providing cable service, we're taking it over, whether you like it or not. Howdy everybody, Gemini Buzzard of Gemini Buzzard's Bright Time Funhouse, and of course, Bongo the Undead Cicerodeo Zombie Clown, Attorney at Law. Here to tell you about Friday night, because we're, we're here to save your Friday night, from just completely being a miss. Gemini Buzzers, Bright Time Funhouse, from midnight to two in the morning, we'll show you, you know, some great old classic bad film, and, uh, you know, probably tweet down a little pants just for, you know, uh, just to make it a little, uh, you know, freshen it up. And, you know, a cavalcade of classic cartoons, uh, all here for your late night enjoyment on Friday nights, here on the Cat Channel 18. <laughs>
see you guys there. ago uh, back a few months ago we had this uh, deal where there was a kind of off again off again on again rumor that uh, on the anniversary of September 11th uh, burnt Tuesday as we like to call it uh, President Bush was supposed to come into town uh, Razorbacks were playing Texas A&M, and uh, the rumors were flying fast and furious that the president was going to come into town and go to the game, which I know a heck of a way to uh, heck of a way to celebrate Burnt Tuesday. But anyway, official word was off and on, you know. We heard there was no way it was coming, then we heard it was coming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm not even sure finally whether he came or not. Uh, that was never ever clarified. And no matter, uh, a bunch of folks here locally decided to take the anniversary of September 11th and the possibility that the president would be in town as a uh, an opportunity to engage in some political actions. And there were several political actions around town. Uh, one took place around College Avenue and the Abbey of Lemur's cameras were there. And I just, we're talking about people who in our wonderful corporate media uh, never really get to be heard for the most part, um, you know, tiny little sound bites at best. 
Anyway, we thought it was important to show their side of the story and uh, hear what they have to say. And like I said, our cameras were there. We got to look at it all. Anyway, I guess the next segment, don't really know what to call it, but here it is. Enjoy. I think that uh, war is really bad for humanity. I would like to see that we would become mature enough as a race to be reach a compassionate maturity. And I think that that is the, the least that I can do before I end my life, is to try to make some little gesture toward that type of Sanity. I just, I personally think it's ridiculous that Bush is showing up for a Razorback game on 9-11. I think it's a bad use of a... Um, yeah, I mean, I know yeah. he's attended some sort of memorial services earlier in the day, but I still think that it's belittling, you know, the memory of what happened. Really disrespectful, you think? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally disrespectful. So that's why I'm, I'm protesting his presence here on this day of all days. Well, let's see. I am here today because I want people to remember that after three years of Bush's policies and wars and violence, we are not any safer in this country. So that's all I have to say. This gentleman should have something to say. Yeah, he gave me a good one a little oh, bit earlier. Good one. All right. Well, I suppose I would be. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, let me get a look at this sign here. Anyway, yeah, we had a... Uh, we had one or another news station here a little earlier, and, uh... I don't know, all I can say is I'll probably give you the better soundbite. <laughs> which means I'll basically include everything you have to say. Okay, well, sure, I'm glad to do that. Seems a, seems a shame we have to be out here doing this again. Seemed about 35 years ago, you know, I heard Martin Luther King speak. And it changed my life, changed my perspective. I was a Republican, I was conservative, I was NRA, I was all those things. And all of that just stopped making a whole lot of sense. You can't kill people in order to win them over. And we didn't do it in Vietnam, are we sure? Hell aren't doing it in Iraq. Yeah, no hearts and minds are being won over. No, not at all. And now that I'm a father and I got two sons, there's no way. You know, I'll very proudly get my sons out of the country rather than have them support any of this. You know, I raised them up to be free thinkers and that's does seem to be their opinion also. So I'm proud of that. George Bush is a liar. George Bush is a demagogue. When people drive by and yell, Bush rules, I say, yeah, he does. That's the problem. Yes, but is he a benevolent ruler or is he a tyrant? Well, <laughs> I think we have a pretty good indication he started a war for no provocation. He lied about it. It's his war. It's on his hands. The trouble is it won't be his kids. thing to me is that so many people can't see through it. You know, he's raised the specter of more terrorism and you know that creates fear and I'm afraid people will vote for him out of fear rather than realizing that most of us are not going to benefit from his regime. He feeds the rich. That's, that's another thing that's wrong with Bush and company. Got a massive war machine that's gonna have to be fed, and the wealthy will make money. I think uh, John Stewart put it very well the other night on the Daily Show. They did a thing on Bush, and they came up with a new slogan for him. He said, "Down with those who are already down." <laughs> well, I could go on and on, but. 
I think you know where I'm coming from. Oh, yeah. And I appreciate it. Whether this goes into the FBI files or wherever it goes, I'm proud to say what I believe. Okay. Should I start? Yep. Okay. Um, I guess what I'd like to say is that uh, today, you know, is this very special day and um, that what people are want and wish to do is to defend us from the terrorists and um, I think he's he's just done an incredibly disastrous job of that and uh, and that scares me enormously that uh, they identify the uh, you know the mastermind behind the the attack and um, and Bush hasn't pursued that you know it was supposed to be Osama dead or alive, and instead it, it was Saddam, and Saddam had absolutely nothing to do with the terrorism, so uh, I just think Bush has uh, taken us down the wrong path, and it's, it's been disastrous, it's been, um, been very, very costly, and uh, we don't want any more of it, we, want, we need to change course here. We have to get rid of Bush. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what I want to say. Is that it? Okay, thanks. I'd just like to say that uh, peace is so important to all of us, and that goes for any race, color, or creed, that after 10,000 years, you would think that people could come to terms with some kind of solution on not killing each other. Thou shalt not kill is one of the Ten Commandments in all the Judeo-Christian ethics, and why we can't live up to it is beyond me. And praise whatever you believe in the Great Spirit. Today is 9-11 and it's a day of remembrance. The, the atrocities of 9-11 were brought by Osama bin Laden. And we are here to remind everybody that he is still at large after three years after President Bush said, we're going to get that guy dead or alive. In the Republican National Convention, Osama bin Laden was mentioned one time at the top. No one else mentioned his name. This is a day of remembrance. Let's remember what the President has not done. You got it. Thanks. My statement is this, if you have spoken to anyone that has been outside of this country or that lives somewhere else, you will know that the United States is more hated than it has ever been. It is because of the policies of George Bush, and the only way we can ever clear ourselves so it's not us against the rest of the world is to vote in a new president to show the world that we don't approve of this either. If we go ahead and take Bush for another four years, there will be no peace in the world for the United States and the rest of the world ever. This is just too reckless, too dangerous. We've got to change things. That's my statement. Have you spoken to many folks from out of the country? Yes. And uh, this is what you found? Yes. Oh, people all over the world are horrified with what we're doing. In, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, with our going alone, your with us or against us policy, with our refusal to use diplomacy, with our refusal to see what we're doing as far as murdering civilians all over the world, it's just horrendous. The, the terrorism threat has grown exponentially because of this violence. It's, there are people signing up for jihad that never thought about doing it before. It's fighting terrorism with violence is absolutely the wrong way to go. You only foment more violence. We're looking at, if we elect George Bush a second time, we are going to see violence in this world like we've never seen. This is just the beginning. It's horrendous. So you would definitely go as far as say that the world is not a safer place the after 9-11. The world is far more dangerous place. Right after the September 11th tragedies, the whole world came to the United States with their hand out saying, okay, now you've suffered too. Now we can be friends and now we can work this out and we sympathize. 
And that was a, a moment where we had a potential to create world peace, to have all of the nations in line and working with each other, and we blew it big time. And now everybody hates us. And it's George Bush they hate. It's George Bush and his henchmen and his policies. Excuse me. I'm usually a lot nicer person than that. Tell me when. You're all set. Hard to battle lack of hard, hard to battle lack of a muffler. Yeah, really. It's absolutely amazing that we're agreeing to send our our kids over to kill other other boys and girls. Absolutely amazing. Families, old people, you know, everybody's killed in a war like this, and I still don't understand what that has to do with us, except for the fact that we've made a lot of enemies over the years by what we've done in other countries. But for us to go attacking a whole country like this because we decide we want to change their leadership. And besides, we're not doing that. Look at what we're doing. We're destroying the country. Their water system, every their electrical system, and we want their oil. Isn't it clear? Can yeah. everybody see that? No water, no electricity, but boy, those oil rigs are yeah, working real well. They are. That's remaining. So that's it. Okay, thank you. Just got through the holidays. Um, um, well, to kind of set this up for you, and it's important to kind of backtrack a little. Back in November, we uh, we did this telethon for the cat. And, uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time, and you know, helped make some money for the cat, and that was a good thing. Um, and we had a blast, but it was important to kind of show you this little bit we did for the telethon to kind of lead into the next segment. Anyway, roll that beautiful beam footage. Anyway, but it's it's been that way. It's been almost a week of quasi-respectability around here for us. Um, one thing that I want to address right off the bat, and I know a lot of you will be kind of surprised by this, there have been all kinds of rumors floating around about just bad blood between us and city government, uh, just bad stuff like that. All these rumors about how we've got this running feud with Mayor Cootie and all this stuff. And I'd like to tell all of you right off the top that it is balderdash. It is so untrue. As a matter of fact, earlier today, and this is important, Earlier today, in a private ceremony, yeah, that's my shiatsu massage from hell, and I won it in a contest, but this is important. I want to show you all this. Just to dispel all the rumors about how we don't get along with the city government and we got all this bad blood with City Hall, check it out. Earlier this day, in a private ceremony, we received the key to the city. I'm not kidding you. Here it is, the key to the city. We got it. It was presented to us with a great deal of pride, and you know, and even has written here the key to the city. So you know it's official. You know it's real. This was given to us with great pomp and circumstance. Oh yeah, terrific pomp, pomp and circumstance. And you got and to be on TV. Yeah, a lot of things people it was don't on know. CNN, wasn't it? Yeah, I think CNN covered it, Fox News, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the all the brand Aaron new hours. Those guys. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, what a lot of people don't know about the key to the city, uh, I think generally there's this going assumption that when you receive the key of the city, it's just kind of this 
little token of people's esteem, and that's actually false. Now, when you're a little kid and you hear about someone being given the key to the city, the assumption you might run with is the fact that the, the idea that you are, you know, you have received a key that opens up all the doors in the city. All of them. What they don't tell you is this is true. Mm. This key will open any lock in Fayetteville. And you know what that means. We're coming to visit. We're coming to visit. With a vengeance. Let me tell you something. We will use this key to the city with impunity. Absolute impunity. And wouldn't you like to have us in your home? Now wouldn't you think that we make got you the tacos. feel good? Yeah, well, we use the key we got into Taco Bell. Yeah, and we weren't even open. I'll yeah. get in the see, fridge it's magic. and put bad things in your milk. No, oh, it's it's going to be fun. Let me tell you. Um, you know, it's going to yeah. be a lot worse mm -hmm. if you don't contribute to the cat. Mm -hmm. See, now we're armed. We have a key to the city, you but we might show some discretion chair. in using this sucker if you will send some money to the cat. Okay. Remember. So think about it. Think about it hard. Do you want us in your living room? We know where How you live. How does that make you feel? So if you don't want that to happen, then you'll want to make out a little pledge to the cat, you know, and uh, we'd like to see it in the thousand dollar range or something per month, but if you can't do that, we're people who understand uh, the dynamics of creeping poverty, yeah. so, um, we're low income folks, five dollars a month, and Any, uh, anything below that, you can send just and I will not that. stop eating tacos till you send money. Anything below a five bucks a month pledge, you can just send to us personally. But uh, why don't you uh, contribute to the cat? Because you know what? When you do it, you're supporting freedom of speech. And that's no joke. Now, we... Uh, Neither is our coming into your home. Yeah. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, go downstairs for a snack, and you see us raiding your refrigerator, shaving your dog, painting anarchy symbols on the walls, Reciting um, bad poetry. You know, dying, reciting bad poetry, dyeing your cat funny colors. Well, you'll know it's because you didn't contribute. You didn't give when giving was a prudent thing to do. And or maybe you think having us come to your home would actually be a good thing. You can contribute to that, too. And so if you want to give a lot of money to the cat, we can just make an appointment to show up. And, and uh, you'll have to have special things when we come over because we like our uh, peanut butter cat and crunch and stuff like that and like uh i don't know um sometimes we get wild and smoke a three musketeers bar or something so you know you're gonna yeah, want to stop out for, well yeah you know and that too and so uh you know um uh, so you know what to do and send money to cat whether you want us to come to your house or not and then anyway it's a moot point because we got the key to the city and we can do this anyhow so uh, it basically gives and he's us got weapons. it basically gives us carte blanche to no. rape and pillage and uh, you know there was something crazy in this taco now, I don't understand no no I mean okay you're telling me all right you're telling me that no 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 so. You ran a 3-4? Well, a 3-4 not... Well... A 3-18? A 4-18? Well... Typically you run a 4-18. Well, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Our, Jesus! Two nine, two eleven at best. Well, how could that be two? That had to mean like half the shit wasn't working. Two nine, two eleven at. Oh shit! Hang on, man. All right. I gotta get back to you on this. Um, we're gonna have to figure this out later. I'll uh. I'll get back to you. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I've got to go. All right, bye. Ugh, sorry about that. Uh, anyway. 
We had uh, recently, recently we went through the holidays. Yeah, we go through New York Abbey at the Lemur Do. You know, basically they're like a, I don't know, like a plague or a locust infestation. It seems like they happen every year. I don't know why. But uh, that last bit with the telephone kind of plays into our little bit for the holidays and... <coughs> Excuse me. Now I want to kind of share that with you. So here's the latest uh, bit. Hi. The name of the segment is going to be Fuck Christmas. You know, if Christ were around today, he would say, take my motherfucking name off of this thing. Because if you get rid of Christ in Christmas, it's just a big fucking mess, which is what it is. Firstly, if you work in retail or industry, and a lot of us do, you're expected to accomplish things. Go to work, pay your bill, you'll probably get Christmas Day off and that's about it. If you're lucky, you might get the weekend off, but probably not. On the other hand, there are other sectors uh, who take about December 15th to about January 3rd of it off. And if you need a washer or dryer or your alarm system fixed, you're fucked. You know, you can call them up, but they're on vacation, you know. Well, fuck you and your vacation. Come fix my dryer. Merry fucking Christmas. And speaking of bitches that do such things, there's another kind of bitch. There's the bitch who stole four pairs of pants out of my dryer at my apartment complex during Christmas. If I find you, I'm going to skin you alive. Now, let me show you something. I want to introduce you to someone. This is the last guy who took my shit. I don't remember what his name is. It might be something like, please, ow, don't, please, stop, that hurts. No, quit, I'll do anything. Anyways, this guy took some of my pants, and as you can see, he doesn't really need pants anymore. He doesn't really need much of anything. His soul has probably gone to a happier place. However, he's still here with me. And he's lonely. You know, this guy needs a friend. And if you're out there, you are going to be joining him. He is going, he sits around the house sometimes. He doesn't do a whole lot. Of, he doesn't even have to pay rent. So, much like your crackhead friend here, you and I don't have, this guy won't have to pay rent. You don't have to pay rent. If I catch you, this is what is going to happen to you. Lesson, moral of the story. Let me break it down. Don't steal Jet's clothes. That's, uh, you know, don't stealing for assholes. Anyways, Christmas, this Christmas anyways, had a few problems, and I have to admit my part. I got brutally drunk on uh, Christmas Eve, probably about a pint of whiskey, which is a lot for me. I'm not a big drinker, and I had one of the worst hangovers. The second worst hangover ever for a Christmas morning. Actually, it was Christmas afternoon. It felt like morning. It felt like about 4 in the morning, but in reality, it was about 12. Went to a nice Chinese restaurant. I'll leave their name out of it. Threw up in their toilet and then proceeded to sit at the table and uh, uh, deal with the wait staff, which was hostile at that point. Needless to say, between the vomiting, the hangover, the angry wait staff and the asshole who took my clothes. This has not been a great Christmas. Anyways, so what do you do? What do you do with that kind of rage? What do you do with this post-traumatic Christmas rage? How do you shake that stuff? Well, as you know, or may not know, but surely you'll find out pretty soon, you people in the service industry that we just can't get in touch with, that we, you know, need your services, but, you know, I don't know, you're out smoking your Christmas crack or whatever. Well, we have a key to the city and we're coming to your home. And just watch the following scenes. This is going to be you. You'll wish you were the guy who stole my shit. <laughs> Thank you. 
The eagle has landed. The weasel is in the hen house. The shit's going down. Come up here, man. We're in. We're in. It's a service rep's house. to the city. So, uh, you know, keep the liquor cabinet full. Plenty of food, ramen noodles. You know, there's got to be another way to make these. They're a little tough. Ooh. Let's see. Let's see what else they got in here. Hey, Chuck, you find anything good? Oh, yeah. What are you doing in there? Oh, I don't know. Just catching up on my reading. You dropping the Cosby kids off at the pool or what? No, no, no. Hey, what do you do with her toothbrush? Oh, neat. Spit on it. Spit on it. Loogie. Loogie. Oh, big old loogie. Oh, nice. Nice wet shot, too. Oh, yeah. That's right. The Abbey of the Lemur, folks, converting to your hygiene. That's right. <laughs> Anything open? Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Calamine lotion. Oh, 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 oh. You should use that with a mag in conjunction with the magazine. Are those pages sticking together yet? Oh, yeah, they're probably going to be kind of congealed. <laughs> nice, man. Nice. Put a hair put a in that thing. Oh, here we go. Is that a lip balm? Oh. oh. Skin pads. Check it out. Oh. <laughs> That's right, Pedro. This is your house. It's somebody's house.
tired here or something. Anyways, dear sirs, like I said, just, sometimes it's just hard, you know, I want to let... Use the fridge magnets. Okay, good. See, that's why they have these things. Mm -hmm. Just so we would show up. And there we go. Let me do a little correction here. Dear sirs, I jacked off in something in the refrigerator. Guess what it was? Jet Black. Merry Christmas. Well, I think our work is pretty much done here. What do you think, Chuck? Oh, yeah. It's time to hit someplace else. Yep. But they have food. We got beer. They have uh, food. So, <laughs> it's what's for dinner. My jizz. So, come on. Let's, uh, let's go find somewhere else. Hey, don't forget to lock the door. Someone might break in. As for us, it's no big deal because we've got the key to the city. We'll leave this door open. Answer the footage, answer the questions about the previous footage. Where was the midget in the footage? What did it say on the refrigerator? What kind of dog did Shannon say was hers as opposed to her neighbor's? What color was the spoon's handle that you did not see? And what color is the lighting that you're looking at right now. Okay, good, cut off.
well, lots of fun stuff happens between tapings. Uh, well, as you all know, uh, George W. Bush is now President of the United States for the second time running. Uh, we have uh, just tons of fun stuff happening. Uh, the guy who wrote memos to the President telling us that uh, the Geneva Conventions did not apply to America is now uh, in charge of law enforcement in America. And, uh, well, we can hardly wait to see what the Constitution turns into. Um, uh, the guy in charge of the guy who was running interference with death squads in Central America is now in charge of intelligence. And things are looking better and better and better here in America. I think it is now time for prayer. Now time for prayer here in the U.S. of A. And uh, here we are on the Abbey the Lemur to lead you in prayer. And I want you to all follow suit with me because in the future we will all be required to pray in this manner. Follow me please. Our heart, light heart, help me I air. I feel how I love.